Hey, Daily Dosers, coming at you from 1 Peter chapter 3 today. As we are walking in tandem with our weekend services, walking through Mark, we wanted to follow uh, kind of the, the ghost writer behind the book of Mark is Peter. Now we get to watch his theology play out and what he thought about Jesus and and not just the story, but almost like the commentary. If you think of like a football game, you've got a play-by-play who tells you what's going on. And you've got the commentator behind who explains why that's significant, why that's important, and what we ought to make of it. First Peter chapter 3. Get ready to be offended. Here we go. Wives, in the same way, submit to your husbands so that if any of them do not believe the word, they may be won over with words by the behavior of their wives. When they see the purity and reverence of your lives, your beauty should not come from outward adornment, such as elaborate hairstyles and the wearing of gold jewelry or fine clothes. Rather, it should be that of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. For this is the way the holy women of the past who put their hope in God used to adorn adorn themselves. They submitted to their own husbands like Sarah, who obeyed Abraham and called him her Lord. You are her daughters if you do what is right and do not give way to fear. Husbands, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives and treat them with respect as the weaker partner and as heirs with you of the gracious gift of life so that nothing will hinder your prayers. Okay, so you might have already shut off the daily dose because we're talking about Wives submitting to husbands, husbands being considerate to men. And um, I think there's a, there's a really important thing to remember when you're doing scripture reading. It's called systematic theology. And systematic theology is a big word, but it basically means we don't have permission biblically to take our complete understanding about any given topic from one passage of scripture. And I'm sure you would appreciate the same thing, right? Maybe in your weaker moment with your kids someday, or maybe uh, you're dating someone right now and they broke up with you and you responded in a way you didn't want to, or maybe with a sibling and uh, at one point they wronged you and, and your response to it was, now imagine if we took a snapshot of your life and it was that particular snapshot and then we said, you, uh, Janice, Steve, Bill, Ted, Bill and Ted, you all are this person because of this one thing. We would hope that you would take the full spectrum, the full counsel of our life and say, how should we, what should we make of this particular section? Because when you read this, you go, wives submit to your husbands. Husbands be considerate in the same way to your wives. And we naturally jump to, wow, did God not think very highly of women? Did God not think very highly of, of this relationship? Did well, Take the full counsel of God's word and here's what you're gonna find out. When Jesus first reveals himself as Messiah, it is to a woman, not just any woman, a Samaritan woman who's uh, consistently caught in adultery and has divorced her husband five different times. Women play a central role in the Old Testament, even get in positions of power that would have been completely backwards in that society, but God calls a woman named Deborah to be the judge of all of Israel. When Jesus comes back from the dead, a bunch of guys are hiding, afraid, and it's two women who find the tomb who are able to be the witnesses And in that day and age, women weren't allowed to even bear testimony in court. And yet Jesus goes, these will be my witnesses. It'll be women. We take the full counsel of God's word. You would go, man, this this God views women in the exact same beautiful capacity that he would view a man. And there's no delineation of worth or value or meaning anywhere when it comes to that. Roles might be a little bit different or um, what he's equipped us for differently or obviously the ability to to bear children is, is important. When we look at the whole thing, we go, man, we have to take this then in context and go, what's he trying to say? God loves similes, but more importantly, God loves metaphors. And if you're not familiar with the difference between those two, a simile is when you compare two things using like or as, you know, I'm as hungry as a horse or I'm as big as a hippo. Uh, Metaphor is when you use a direct comparison. Uh, She is a bear when she doesn't get enough food or uh, he is such an animal when it comes to the way that he presents himself when he's been drinking. That's a direct comparison. And here's one that God uses in scripture. So I want you to see through everything and realize where this falls in the, in the narrative in 1 Peter 3. It's talking about Jesus' sacrifice, if you've been joining us in the past daily doses, what God has done for us. And then he says, likewise, your marriages ought to be a metaphor of the way that I love you. Which means sometimes In fact, all the time when it comes to Jesus, we get the better end of the deal. He died and suffered for us. He is perfect and we get to relish in his glory and his power and his eternity. In the same way, whether male or female, would you be willing to give up whatever it takes and stop doing bad math in your relationship for whatever your partner needs because your marriage reflects Jesus? What if that's what's its only purpose?